Okay, so this is gonna be a very short video. I'm just gonna show you how to make this animation here in the Fusion tab of DaVinci Resolve. So let's just get into it. Okay, so the first thing that you wanna do is go into the toolbox here in DaVinci Resolve once you're in your new project. Then to make sure this is open, uh, the effects button is gonna be right here. So click this. And then you wanna go into uh, toolbox, as I said, and you wanna search up Fusion Composition, okay? So I don't have any video right now, but for example, if you had your video below and you wanted to add the animation in your video as like an overlay, you wanna make sure the background is too transparent. And to do that, you wanna go into the Fusion page. And right now with your Fusion composition, all it's gonna give you is a media out. And basically what a media out is, is just whatever is gonna show up in the final edit once all of the effects are applied. So in the first node, you wanna add a background node, which is just gonna be this one right here and then you want to drag the background node and connect it to the media out. And um, it's gonna show you two screens. If you wanna just make this the only screen, you can click this button right here. It might not show up uh, if your window is not big enough, so you might need to drag this out a little bit to see it. Uh, so once it's your only screen, click the background node, and then you wanna drag the alpha in the inspector tab. So you can click this button to open it. Drag the alpha all the way down and this will basically make it transparent. So whatever you put in between here is going to be an overlay and uh, there's going to be no background in between it. Okay, so now um, it's very simple to make this animation. All you have to do is take the ellipse node right here. You can just take this, drag it to your composition and then you want to drag another background node right here. So let's say you wanted to make the circle white. Uh, you would have to make the background white first. And then uh, what you can do is take the output of here, hold and drag, and then place it right on this square right here. And what that will do if you do that is create a merge node. The reason why you have to create a merge node is so you can put all of the elements together in one video and they don't really affect each other and you can uh, edit each one individually. Okay, so then you wanna take the ellipse and you wanna do the simple thing to edit the size within the controls of the ellipse. So you wanna right click on the width and then go to expression. And then you're gonna see this plus sign pop up and then you can just connect it to the height by holding and dragging and then dropping it on the height. So now when you adjust the height, it will adjust the size of the circle because normally when you adjust it, it will only adjust one dimension of the circle. And to get finer adjustments, you can just hold and drag on the number here. So let's say I wanted to do around this size and I want to move it like right here. And then let's say I wanted to make two more circles. So then I would just make sure I'm selecting this ellipse node, control C, control V, and then just do the same thing, control C, control V. And then to keep this in line with the other circles, make sure when you hover over this, you only select this arrow here. So it doesn't, you can't actually move it up and down. Uh, it will be exactly in line with your other circle. So just drag it here. And if you wanna make sure if it's completely centered, you can actually right click on this background here, go to guides and then go to show guides to make sure it's perfectly centered if you wanna be exact. And then you can go to the other circle. Again, drag it with this arrow. That looks about right. I'm actually gonna turn these guides off really quick. Okay, and then what you wanna do is take another background node. So just take it right here and then make it white again. And you wanna take something called the polygon node. So it's gonna be this one right here. Also, if you can't find it, you can always do control space and then it will bring up this tool menu right here. You can search up anything, polygon node, background node, uh, anything you want even merge node, and you can connect this polygon to the background node, and then again, connect it to the square. You wanna drag it and place it on the square so it creates another merge node. And that's gonna be an important part of making this actually work. So then select the polygon node, and you want to click right here, try to click on the center. You don't have to get exact, uh, it doesn't really matter. And then click right here, and then to make sure the line's completely straight, hold shift while you're clicking, and even if like I click up here, it'll make sure the line is straight. And then you can hold shift if you wanna adjust it without like moving it up and down. And then once you have your line here, make sure you're selecting the polygon node, and then you wanna go to border width and move this up a little bit. And that's how you will get this line here. And then from here, it's actually pretty simple. Wherever you want an animation to start, whether that's at frame zero or frame 20, uh, whatever you want to do, you can adjust the length to do the animation. And then also if you adjust the position and it, uh, adjust it from the other side. So either way uh, you want to do it works. So let's say at frame zero, I want it to be 
and not showing at all. So I put the length down to zero. I put a keyframe and then let's say I want the animation to last 15 frames. So I'll move up to frame 15 and then move the length all the way up. So now I have this really simple animation and you're pretty much done. I'm gonna show you a couple ways to make it look a little bit cleaner. So one way to do it, go to the spline tab. This is gonna make the animation a bit smoother. So you wanna click on the three dots, click on select all tools, and then you wanna click on this icon here to zoom to fit so you can see everything. And I actually like zooming out a little more so I can highlight everything. Okay, so then you wanna make sure that you highlight all of these keyframes here, and then you can just press S to smooth it out, and then T. And then I like bringing the ease in up a lot, so it creates a really smooth animation. So this is what it actually looks like with the spline tab. And then just to make it a little bit cleaner, what you can do is go ahead and add a drop shadow at the end. So it's gonna be control space to open up the tool menu, drop shadow, and then you can actually add this and drag it at the end of everything so it affects all of the uh, shapes. And then you got this cool drop shadow here. You can adjust it with this, uh, however you wanna adjust it. Or another thing you can do is control space again, you can add a soft glow to it. So that's also gonna be a cool effect. And you can see here, it's also a soft glow. You can adjust this as much as you want. You can adjust like the glow size of it, uh, whatever you want. And I also wanna show you a specific effect that I did in one of my videos. That is like a yellow line starting from the beginning and then going to the end and each circle turns yellow as it hits the circle. Okay, so I'm wearing a different shirt because my camera died yesterday and I had to continue recording today. So anyway, let's just continue. Basically how you do the animation is you wanna take this ellipse here and you wanna separate all of these. And the reason why you need to separate these ellipses is because you need to make each one yellow at a different time and having them on the same node chain is going to uh, affect all of them. So to separate them, you just have to hold shift and drag them out. And then you simply just move them out of the way. And all you have to do is take this, move it over here, make room for the other ones and you just need to copy this one with the other ones. So you need to add a background node. Um, I would just control C, control V, copy and paste this, and then drag it onto the square to create another merge node. And then do the same one with the last circle. Gonna make some more room for this. Okay, now that we have our three circles separated, what we need to do is make the first one yellow. And the color doesn't have to be yellow, but you just wanna create this illusion that it's like a progression where the line is going and then as the line hits each circle, the color of the circle changes. So it can be blue, whatever uh, color you want. And you can even make these circles like a low opacity white and then you make the uh, line a full opacity white. So it's like, as it's progressing, the opacity is changing. Okay, so to make this circle yellow, you need to go to the background, click on the color over here in the inspector tab and change it to yellow. And then you need to scroll in the frames to when this line hits the next circle. So it's going to be for me, it might be different for you, but for me, it's going to be at frame four. And right as it hits it at frame four, I need to change this uh, the color of this from white to yellow. So how I do this is I go one frame back before it hits the circle. I put a keyframe on the color and then I go one frame forward and change it to yellow. So, oops, change it to yellow and then as soon as it hits uh, the circle, it will change like that. And then do the same thing for the last circle as well. So I'm just gonna say like here, put a keyframe, put another one and make it yellow. And then you also wanna make the line yellow as well. So you can go to the background below the polygon node and make this yellow. So now you have an effect that looks like this. So if you wanna change the timing of this so it slows down a little bit, you need to basically look at the animation of it and it's gonna be a little bit complicated. So first what you need to do is look at which animations you have going on. So the animations, so what you need to do is look at the animations that you have going on. And to see which nodes have animations attached to them, you can look at this little keyframe icon on each node. And every node that has this icon has an animation to it. So if you remember, we added this uh, color change on these two background nodes. And we also have this polygon node, which extends all the way until keyframe 15. 
as you can see here by this little keyframe indicator. And what you need to do is make sure that your fusion composition is longer than keyframe 15. So my fusion composition lasts 20 frames. So it leaves a couple frames after the animation ends for the viewer to see the actual uh, elements of the animation. And you'll see what I mean by this later on when I show you how to actually make it slower. And uh, what you need to do is you need to add this node here. I've already added it, but um, to add it, you just press control space to open up the menu, search up keyframe stretcher, and then go ahead and add this node and put it at the end of all of your nodes, uh, right before the media out. And then what you need to do is select when the animation happens. So in my case, the animation starts at frame zero and ends at frame 15. So what I need to do is uh, put stretch start at frame zero, stretch end at 15. And then for the source start and source end, my source, uh, and what it means by source is the actual uh, composition. So you can see mine starts at frame zero and ends at frame 20. So then when I go into my fusion composition, uh, you can see it already starts at zero. I need to put in 20 here. So that's the difference between the animation uh, and then how long the source actually is. And then once you've set those settings up, it should be good to go. And all you need to do is just drag it and it will slow the animation down. So if I want to drag it to this time, it'll be a lot slower. So you can see uh, it slows down the animation and you can make it faster by uh, moving it down. So you can see it's a lot faster. And uh, basically once you have this set up, you can make it as slow or as fast as you want it to be. So, and then if you want to add something extra, you can put a white polygon line uh, here. So it kind of just looks like the yellow is progressing and overtaking the white. And you can see what I mean by looking at the animation that I'm referencing uh, in one of the other videos that I've made. And what you need to do to achieve this is basically just control C and control V this polygon and background node, and then go ahead and merge it up and then just change the background to white. And you also want to get rid of this animation. You don't really need this. So just get rid of it. Uh, put the length all the way up and then it's pretty much good. And then uh, also what you need to do, so now you can see that the white polygon line is over the yellow one. So just a quick fix to this is you click on the merge node that the white polygon connects to and you need to go to operator and then under. So now you have this animation where the yellow takes over uh, each white circle and it kind of progresses. And what you want to do, if you want to be able to have this as a drag and drop animation that you can use in any project in the future, is go to the edit page. And what you need is something called a power bin. So a power bin is basically a folder that you can access in any project. It doesn't matter if you create it in this project. If you go into another project, you'll also see the same power bin. So to add this power bin, you go to view at the top. And then from view, you go to show power bins. And I'm actually gonna get rid of this smart pin because I don't need it. So I can just go to view and then uncheck show smart pins. And I wanna drag this up. And then you have this master power bin. And all you need to do is just click on this fusion composition here, click and hold and drag it into the power bin here. Or you can drag it onto this master thing. And then here you have this animation as a drag and drop that you can use in any project in the future. So to show you that this actually works, I'm gonna open up a new project. And you can just click here, and then I'm just gonna go new project, test, create. So now we have a completely new project. And now if you see, we have the power bins. I go to master here, and then drag and drop. And look, I have the same exact fusion composition. And if I click on it, go to fusion page, it has all of the nodes. I can mess with all the settings however I want and use it for any project in the future and it will save you a ton of time. So that's gonna be it. Feel free to subscribe if you wanna see more content like this and also leave a comment on what video you think I should make next. So if you wanna support me, I have two affiliate links down below. So what I have is two affiliate links down below. One is for Epidemic Sound and the other one is to Envato Elements. I personally use both of these programs. 
And what Epidemic Sound has is a really cool music library that you can use for your videos. And Envato Elements has over like 2,000 DaVinci Resolve templates that you can use for your videos to improve your editing game and save a bunch of time with your videos. If you don't know what to watch next, I actually made this tutorial on how to make thumbnails like Sebastian Giorgio and Iman Gaji. So go check that out.